Damn, we, did we just go through all that larceny just like that? Was that? There, yeah, oh, there's, there's another bottle there. Oh, okay. <laughs> I opened a new bottle. I was like, damn. <laughs> you guys aren't playing. <laughs> Back from Easter. <laughs> Straight to drinking. Len is done. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> All right, so we're going to talk about uh, reparations, and because it's the topic hot button of many of these politicians today, you have Bernie Sanders, you have a uh, uh, pendejo Beto guy who's uh, talking about, you know, yeah, you know, people should have reparations for stuff that happened 100 years ago, stuff that didn't happen 21 today, um, but maybe someone that they're related to, or sometimes people say collectively, you know, this is what happened to our people, so we deserve some money. Um, and I think a great way to start this off would be with something that you found recently with uh, Walter Block's right. uh, position on that. Right. So Walter Block is a scholar at the Mises Institute, and he doesn't take this tack that the uh, Democratic politicians are taking. But he does take a course through this reparations argument. And basically what he, what he starts off with is to say that um, – Instead of this collective guilt notion, um, he want he gets very specific about who's been wronged and uh, what. So basically, I'll, I'll explain his argument just like uh, as it's written. He says, uh, "Justified reparations are nothing more, nothing less than forced return of stolen property." And I'll try to say it in his accent as well. You know, right. New York, <laughs> New York. <laughs> kind of even, <laughs> even after a significant no, <laughs> even after a significant amount of time has passed. For example, if my grandfather stole a ring from your grandfather and then bequeathed it to me through the intermediation of my father, then I am presently the illegitimate owner of that piece of jewelry. To take the position that reparations are always and forever unjustified is to give an imprimatur to theft, provided a sufficient time period has elapsed. In the just society, your father would have inherited the ring from his own parent and then given it to you. It is thus not a violation of private property rights, but a logical implication of them to force me to give over this ill-gotten gain to you. Uh, and then he says precisely the same analysis applies to slavery. Um, basically, owning a slave is a crime under libertarian law. Those people who owned slaves in the pre-Civil War U.S. were guilty of the crime of kidnapping. Even though such practices were legal at the time, Part of the value of their plantations was based on the forced labor. Were justice finally done in 1865, um, he says these people would have been incarcerated for uh, having owned slaves. Um, and that part of the value of their holdings attributable to slave labor would have been turned over to the ex-slaves. Instead, those slave masters kept their freedom, bequeathed their property to their own children. Their great-grandchildren now possess farms under a regime of justice would have never been given to them. Uh, instead, they would have been in the hands of the great-grandchildren of the slaves who had worked on them. To return these specific lands to those blacks in the present day who can prove their ancestors were forced to, uh, to work on those plantations is thus upholding private property rights, not denigrating them. So it's the idea that very specific, very uh, the, 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 pro the property that's being debated here is very local to the individuals who had been related. Uh, and so the ultimate question comes down it to is I think what amount of time are we willing to um, after that time has passed say this is no longer um, this is no longer property that was stolen you've essentially given it up right uh, you could say it kind of falls under the whole <clears throat> uh, vacancy lots uh, there's a lot of people who say well you buy these houses uh, you don't build upon them you let it dilapidate and uh, you just kind of let it go to ruin. At one point, do we just say it's abandoned uh, and we can just, uh, someone can homestead and take it over. Um, maybe you can say maybe claims after a certain period of time, even in like in the state today, right. if you were to find uh, a wallet or money or jewelry, you're supposed to make an announcement like in a local newspaper saying that you found it. And then after a year, you can be the new owner of the lost said property. Uh, I think... As long as you have like the receipts, as I mentioned, if you can prove this kind of, you can trace this all the way back. Right. Uh, maybe you could have a case, uh, but at the same time, it's kind of weird because a ring is something tangible, something real that you can point. Time itself, or you know, slavery being defined as controlling someone's body, or and or their possessions, their property, uh, is not a real. Uh, the time that they spend in their body is not like something tangible that you can. 
uh, an hourly. Same with well, it could be <clears throat> construed as an hourly labor rate, right? Well, right. I charge yeah. twenty dollars an hour and times forty hours a week, and over that period of time that I was forced to stay on that plantation, right? So they'll say, "Well, here's the you know, it's it's a million dollars." Uh, your great grandfather owned a plantation, including interest, including incre- interest, right? Ten million dollars, <laughs> right? Uh, and it's not uh and so you, as the great great grandson, you can still continue to own uh, the land, uh, the business, the f- you know, turn into a farm or something like that. Uh, they'll try to say that, well, you owe me a million dollars because that's what he would have passed down right. to uh, his lineage, right? Uh, supposedly, you know, or maybe he could have like gambled it away, right? Who knows, right? Right. Uh, so that's not to say that these stuff would have, like that ring would have naturally passed on to the next person. It could have been sold and bought for something else. Um, I would say in that regards, uh, kind of goes against the, you know, you yourself didn't commit any aggression, right? right. Someone else committed that aggression. Um, I don't know if like aggression can be transferred Right, leniently wise to right. your great grandson, and that you have, would have to pay. Um, if it is because you still own the business that benefited from that, <clears throat> uh, I mean, you can just change the legal name of the business, right? <laughs> <laughs> I would, ar- I would argue that um, this is similar to an example of, say, a car that was stolen with bad title. So, I have a car, I own it outright, and I sell it to um, my friend. And my friend, um, or no, it, forget that. Let's say I, I, it's stolen by a friend, and my this this friend then proceeds to um, sell it to somebody else, who is a perfectly normal everyday person who just decided they wanted to buy a car and they decided to buy it from my, my friend who stole it from me, and so my friend didn't have good title when when he sold. It. Right, because he he was just taking something that wasn't his, and he gave it away, uh, and he was just taking taking all this money from this other person who then bought it, thinking that they had uh, just made a real transaction. But it turns out that car no longer has good title, and so when the person buys that car, they might also think about purchasing title insurance to ensure that this transaction is legitimate. And if it turns out that it's not, the title insurance comes in. And reimburses them for their efforts and their the money that they've spent on this deal. That's a good point. Uh, I bought title insurance for my house. Right. right. So that's something kind of goes in the big. In case the utility company comes back to you and right. says, "Hey, or, we, uh, you know, there's something problem with the previous owner, or something wrong with the, the documents, or uh, or maybe their debt passes on, or something like that." Um, yeah, so insurance kind of pretty much kind of covers that. So, you- so for the the good guy yeah. who's who's just happened to be the descendant of a former slave owner, he's protected with something like title insurance when he owns a a, pro- a piece of property that maybe he doesn't know quite what went into producing it. He can still say, "Hey, I uh, I have title insurance. Maybe my risk is higher than the guy who." Just arrived from Africa, who maybe ne- or maybe did own his ancestors did own slaves, and right? So you, you just don't know, and uh, that I think that would ultimately be the way that you you deal with. That could issue. you, uh, if you're, if you could show paperwork to show uh, that uh, your great grandfather? I mean, it doesn't mean you're just because you're white. Well, I believe at uh, the peak it was like one point four percent of white people in slavery, six uh, percent in the South. Uh, like 1.6 in the north, so it wasn't all whites. There's also 500 or 400 uh, black slave owners in North Carolina, so it wasn't uh, specifically a color. Sure. Could you also draw a connection with receipts? You can show, yes, my grandfather did that, uh, but he bought it from this uh, Jewish uh, slave trader that right. was at the market, right? Because a lot of them were involved here in the United States with selling blacks and selling slaves, um, and then of course you know. You can trace the receipt back to Africa, and you can find uh, uh, like a, some royalty or something like that that still has a connection to the people that sold and right. captured those slaves and sold in the market. Because Europeans didn't go inland to capture slaves; they bought them at from ports, uh, yeah. right? That Africans would uh, capture them and sell them, right? So, at that point, like, how far does this right. reparation thing 
Go. The ultimate problem with dealing with any kind of criminals is that they don't preserve any kind of the wealth that they steal. Right. They, 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 you know, this is why they're into crime in the first place. They, they, they uh, steal stuff and they fritter it away on pointless activities. So that's ultimately what you come back to is, yes, you could go back through the, the, the chain of, of theft and you wouldn't get anything from this guy and and it's it's like today i mean if if you went to libya and you saw the slave trade that's occurring there today uh whoever's selling whoever's engaging with the slave market is it, today is not doesn't have anything and you probably couldn't get anything out of them but ultimately the principle is is the goal here is to defend the idea that um pro- private property rights should be protected regardless of how long it's been since the theft occurred. And I think that really matters when you, you're thinking about tax income and right. and uh, the way the government treats treats people. You know, if your great-grandfather paid in all this money and never got anything back, it seems like that's an argument against the state, even if they can't pay it back. And they say that uh, you could liquidate state holdings to kind of pay people back what they paid in, right? Uh, you could also say, say I'm the grand, I'm the grand, great grandson of someone of such. Uh, could I not then look at your voting records? And if you voted for an increase of socialist policies, an increase of taxes, uh, and slavery defined as uh, controlling what you can do with your body and or your property, right. uh, do I now have a legitimate uh, claim against you for reparations? All right, um, and I think very easily. It's about anyone here yeah. <laughs> in the United States can do that uh, against everyone who's uh, you know put their uh, slip in that uh, voting box. It, yeah, I mean, there's so many though. The problem is that the the records get so um, so insignificant. Like with, even with my family, who are more recently educated and more long ago were much more ignorant. It's like from Ireland, they didn't have any records of where they they came from or or you know they knew very little about their history and uh they had been laborers and ditch diggers and things so the it wouldn't take very long before you just don't have any information and right there's nothing <clears throat> more to try to get graft like we're not going to go back to the vikings and say hey scandinavia you owe us a bunch of money for invading what do you think our- about like the artifacts that they have from like other countries like um in england they have artifacts from like i believe like in egypt from ancient times, all these explorers going there and bringing stuff back. Right. Do you think uh, this stuff belongs to people there cultural-wise? Um, <laughs> but, but at the same time, where do those people get it, right? Um, mostly through theft, right? right. Through, through slavery, through hard labor, labor right? So um, you could say no one really has a legitimate claim on that. I guess you could say is storage in a museum is there to kind of as a collection because um, no one really claims it to be used as like uh, collateral anyways, right? Right, right. It's a difficult uh, one when people try to assign a group uh, this that owns this thing. Right. So the Mayans uh, had uh, XYZ Temple, and um, so therefore all of this group gets to have that or right. gets to be associated with that, even though, you know, they, they, don't, they don't really think they own it or consider themselves owners of it. So yeah, it, that's where it gets difficult because, but if you keep things on an individual basis, which, which is what we strive to do, yeah. then it, it's more simplified. And uh, a- after a while, I think people would eventually say, "Hey, there's no point in fighting these these battles from long ago. It's too much work. I'd rather focus on it." And if you're relying on receiving reparations instead of just going to your job every day and right. being happy with what you the skills you have, then you're probably not going to be happy. Um, there's um now say my grandfather great grandfather owned slaves in the north because they had slavery in the union in the right. north right even during the the war there was slavery still Maryland, there. yeah um uh, and west virginia was also one uh so i would say uh what if my what if uh, my great grandfather uh fought and died <clears throat> in the civil war uh do you not think maybe that's the price you can say uh, equal towards those reparations, right? Uh, do do they get a discount for the hundreds of thousands uh, slaughtered? If the if the narrative is to say that it was to end slavery, <laughs> right? 
Uh, don't you think then they would get a discount or you can say, well, you know, the red and the ledger is wiped off. Right. Um, you can look at the rest of the entire world where they had slavery uh, longer than the West uh, in this kind of time period. Um, but it was in the West, uh, the Christians in England that championed the abolition of slavery. Uh, and England being the dominant uh, culture and, and group of people in right. the world uh, passed this through their uh, legislation to their house uh, and ensure that uh, every part of the empire uh, it was illegal to have slaves. Mm. Uh, you, they even made it illegal in India, right? So a lot of other cultures were practicing. Uh, Western civilization came in yeah. and ended it. So, you know, it could, what was the, I would say, not the gratefulness, but um, I guess the ability were to recognize, the, to recognize the, right. how fortunate right. you know, this was. That how this, could not that just be reparation enough? If, if yeah, if you could make the argument that well, if if um, Middle Eastern countries had conquered the world, I mean, we ver- might very well still have slavery today. Right. Um, so, it, it, aren't we fortunate that the uh, Anglo-Saxon culture instead decided? And and yeah, I guess. I mean, there. But nonetheless, the Anglo-Saxon uh, Declaration of Independence, you know, Magna Carta tradition is still one that says we, you know, th- we have to have objective truths about what you know what we do the the law the system applies to everybody and and the fact to me that you know looking back to 1865 and thinking once all the slaves were declared free and that nothing happened except for well now you're free you buzz off yeah uh to me if i looked at libya today i would say oh no those people are definitely deserved a lot more than than what uh you know, they're getting now, or, you know, let's try to track down those guys, maybe sell a few of their Mercedes who right. were selling them into slavery and, and give them back something. But, uh, it, yeah, it's, it's a difficult, uh, to get into the weeds of this. I think the principle, ultimately the general principle has to hold up though. Um, it's not, it's not good if we are willing to sacrifice it just for the sake of, uh, and I, you know, I used to be less sympathetic to this idea, but I think you end up getting into more difficult, uncomfortable conclusions when you end up taking uh, taking private property rights to its to its ultimate conclusion. You know, right? I mean, if it's at the individual level and you can prove it, I guess that's an interesting case to kind of look at. But if it comes as like a mass group of people in which yeah. like these politicians are going to going for, and it was that's the much, problem, right? That's the problem, right? It's like going to put a, together a. Uh, a white man uh, tax, yeah. pretty much. Um, being ignorant of the fact there are also black slave owners. Being ignorant of the fact that there are uh, indentured servitudes, uh, people who are in trouble with the law and sent over here to uh, be temporarily enslaved. And yeah. most of them died because, you know, they're not going to be, they were worked harder because they're not going to be around after those seven some years or so. Uh, and so, like, their death is uh, comparable to many of uh, the other chattel slaveries that was out there. Yeah. Uh, but you don't see any kind of monuments or any kind of memorials for that. Uh, and that's kind of less talked about. This seems to be more about um, blame white people. Again, it seems to be always the rhetoric. Yeah, from the, the, yeah the notion that uh, all African-Americans today get to receive money from the government that's arbitrarily taken from virtually everybody, including right. white and black and Asian and people who just came here, and that is preposterous. That, that one is indefensible and i think most people agree uh at least or that that's there's no way to accept that, Beto, Beto think, or work you say that i think there was a what university was it georgetown or something like that where the, the students it's not one that's kind of will go on the college admission and stuff like there are people to pay tuition but it's like right. a student were able to vote on on a, such a um, amendment uh and hopefully could get through it, they hope but saying like yeah they'll they'll gladly pay more yeah uh for uh, other students, uh, blacks that can get a lower tuition rate, right? So you would pay extra for other people. Mm. Uh, and my joke would come, well, don't you? Well, if what about a discount for if we're going to go that way for my people to have ended slavery? Yeah, right. It, there's, you know, it's still going on today. It would probably still be going on if I mean England. Uh, I was reading about you know middle middle medieval uh, England and just the at the point that they decided that they were going to end slavery and the reasons that they did it. And it's, 
it's fascinating to think about. I mean, it's got a lot to do with their their religious you know traditions and whatnot. But it's it's fascinating when you think that they could have clung to this ridiculous system that isn't actually a profitable way <laughs> to right. engage in. But Peter Schiff has has pointed that out before. Right. Um, so <laughs> I mean, can we claim uh, receipts all the way to? Uh Muslim countries from the Barbary slave trade, uh, 1.5 million Christians enslaved more than the 400,000 that came here to America. So the rest went down to South America. The Janissaries in Turkey right. yeah. and Ottoman uh, Empire. Do you think they would even care to consider <laughs> I bring up these kind of discussions, right? Right. Uh, you know, that stuff, it's like it's not— uh, They won't admit to the Armenian genocide. They won't even admit know, to that. So. Right, yeah. Slaughter of Christians. Right. It seems that uh, this area of— um, Western culture, like making amends and looking in this area and finding morality and trying to be good, um, seems to be preyed upon by other cultures that don't have that kind of self-inflection of their own people, of their own culture, uh, and just looks this, at this as an opportunity to just uh, take and grab uh, and run with as much as you can. Right, yeah. Uh, I think their <clears throat> societies are worse off for that, though. I think they, they end up... Um, when they play by those rules, they ultimately die by those rules because they end up saying, well, you know, we're, we're not going to hold these values into high esteem. And so they right. ultimately all become criminals and they're all feeding off each other. And, and nobody likes living in a society like that. Whereas people come in droves to live in Western societies because of the value that you have rights and there is, there is law and order. And so I, I mean, I, I think that uh, people seeking that, also, first need to understand that it, that they have to change whatever you know <laughs> right. values they had before. And what wealth I would say, like in their in terms of their demanding for coming from the south, right? If one point four percent only own slave because it's very expensive to have it. Mm -hmm. You have the government with the Fugitive Slave Act; it turns everybody into a uh, unwanted uh, slave catcher. Uh, but when you burn the entire south during the Civil War, it's like there's there's nothing left. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you know, you have Sherman's March. You have uh, Lincoln uh, authorizing rapes of women and burning of towns. Right. Um, what what wealth is there left uh, to take? Right. Uh, retroactively and kind of going back to any of that. I heard an interesting um, interesting statistic about it's just the I, I'm not sure how specific it was, but the the rate at which southern 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 men went to uh, college was actually much higher than the north. Um, before the civil war and the civil war ended up just destroying the, the south i mean taking its best people yeah and um taking its its brightest people and its best business but yeah the the southern way of life was never going to be the same and uh and and yeah they were they invented modern uh, terrorism i mean sherman you know going so you could you could absolutely point to all those things but i would uh i would i would ultimately say that that this is a good argument that the idea of reparations um is good being a being payable even regardless of time the amount of time that's uh, gone by is a good way to use it against the north too is to say that um all those people they killed that still is relevant you know that still is something important that we should think about and uh it's told that they still have to pay someday you know that right. is is worth noting and, and remembering just how horrible the government can be to mm -hmm. uh to to the people and uh to people who say that they don't want to be a part of it anymore too right uh in a libertarian society in kapistan and arkistan uh, i think there would be time constraints for you to make a claim kind of like insurance you know hey if like a house fell in your house uh, right. uh i mean a tree fell in your house yeah, that was like two years ago i'm making the claim and i was like all right there's kind of a window yeah you kind of have to make that right yeah um and the same way of like dilapidated properties, uh, uh, and that's another thing that would kind of you know, like it's been ten years. You haven't done anything to this property to like it seems abandoned. Uh, yeah, it allows for people to come in and, and homestead it. I would I would agree with that. Um, I think that is a a fair way, especially when the property owner has said, "I don't care about this right. thing." Yeah. I but w if somebody if somebody say a slave said, "No, no, I do want to get paid back. What was done was an injustice." It, I absolutely do. I'm not okay with this system. And the government steamrolls them and says, uh, well, sorry. I mean, uh, 
you're you know you just don't get to get paid back and right. uh now all these guys are getting off scot-free too by the way right then i can see as long as the, per, the um real owner is able to protest and say i don't agree with this and as long as they keep protesting then uh if they just say no i give up i don't care anymore right i mean you can also do like uh that's another issue kickstarter stuff like there's um there's this big bitcoin guy i forgot his name where it t- turns out uh he's like uh, not the jesus of bitcoin some other guy stephanopoulos uh, he's a weird uh, greek name oh safadin amos another one so know. it turns out like he's not a bitcoin millionaire and uh was telling people yeah you know he's been promoting it for a long time and all this stuff and but he's been spending it to kind of make a living for his family um and all of a sudden, uh, you know, he's got uh, all this wave of Bitcoin coming at him. Instant millionaire. All right. Huh. Right. Um, so you can have, I guess you could say, hey, uh, it's not coming out of my pocket. I feel what you're saying. You know, yeah, sure. I'll gladly contribute some money to it. I could help you with the fundraiser for that. But mm. I wouldn't say to acknowledge like I myself am guilty. Um, yeah. I want to put myself to say that uh, I'm responsible and it should come out of my coffers. Um, yeah. Again, it's not like if it was a ring that's been passed down, it's like, okay, yeah, you caught me. Yeah, the ring's right here. All right, it's yours. Um, I guess the title insurance would cover the uh, the cost of like wrong title ownership, you could say, right? Right. So. And, and the title insurance would absolutely attach when there's people of uh, high risk, you know, who, who routinely sell things that are not theirs. Right. Who routinely <clears throat> steal from other people and sell. And you're things. fencing it. Right. Right. Uh, other than that, I mean, you have a lot of places um, like Mali today still has slavery. There's a lot of African countries right, right now Libya. admitting their, their role in slavery back then, too, and capturing uh, blacks and selling them. Uh, you know, it's if that's going to be the case, then, you know, universalize it and go after all those other people. Right. Absolutely. Uh, it seems to always just be focused, though, on just uh, the 1.4% of white people and kind of ignoring who have stuff. Right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Everyone else. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it's definitely a problem of having stuff. And, uh, but you can imagine, you know, being that guy who like gets into a sketchy business that really abuses people or steals from people. And then thinking, I mean, that isn't that what the Godfather movie right. t- yeah. series is all about? <laughs> he kind of sets his family up for, for disaster and he's just trying to, to, uh, create wealth for them. But, it's the unintended consequences and, and that's ultimately the uh that's why we you know seek better ends better <laughs> right the right thing to do <laughs> i would say then if there if you could show receipts maybe but i wouldn't blame the guy today no one today's yeah. a slave no yeah yeah you no one here was born a slave unless you're in libya um you can say if you're going to to continue to press it forward then the other person can say well let's take a look at your voting record and maybe let's see how much you owe me right <laughs> uh, and reparations for increases of my taxes and property taxes and everything that you voted for and put press for and see how that cancel each other out because you have a uh, interesting story to happen with yeah. poland when poland wasn't going to uh take in uh immigrants so germany in charge of the eu is pressing fines against poland <laughs> and poland came back it's like well interesting i think uh, we should kind of examine how much reparations you owe us from uh, world war ii and yeah. the sums of millions of dollars <laughs> and of course germany quickly shut up about that right. right yeah oh absolutely and this yeah this principle definitely holds up i mean um you know on you could you find polish families who probably been mistreated by russians and germans and everybody right. in between so yeah <laughs> So, uh, those listening, let us know what you think about reparations. Do you owe anyone anything? Your ancestors? Should you pay anything? (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And with that, stay liberated. And get off my property.